So these are the GV engine guards. I ordered from Capri Moto. I ordered them Wednesday, just shy of midnight, and they got here Friday before lunch. That's Italy to New York, which is amazing. They came well packed. You can see it's like in a plasticky, that plastic is kind of hard almost. It protected them, no scratches, no dents, nothing. All in all, well packed, I was happy. Okay, GV crash bars. First couple of tips on the installation. One, you can loosen up the oil uh, cooler in the front. It's a great opportunity to find out which bolts the Royal Enfield factory has chosen to cross the threads on. In my case, the, sorry about that, top one was fine, bottom one threads crossed. That's the second bolt I found with cross threads on the bike. Always a pleasure. Uh, I loosened it a little bit. That gives you a little bit of room to push this back. That's a 13 on this side. On the other side, it's a 17. Put a wrench on that side to hold it. On this side, use a long extension to get yourself out to about here. You can swing it easier. There's your first tip to get that bolt off. I popped the plugs out that was in that were in here with a uh, just grabbing one of a pair of pliers. They're rubber. This this is a relocation bracket. It's one of the first things to do after you get the bolts out. So this was here. Take this out. Mount the bracket in there. Put this back on. This screw back on here. This was wire tied to here, and I'm going to rewire tie it again. There's a little hole back there for it. Next, you're going to be mounting the bar on this side, so the very first bolt you're going to need to install is down near the, uh, the skid plate under there. So you can't get to it. There's two other videos currently on YouTube for doing this. Uh, one guy loosened the exhaust, and the other guy just rammed a block of 2x4 in there. I'm not a huge fan of ramming, ramming the wood in, so ramming the block of two by four all the way under there, and uh, it it's not easier. But it, the better way to go is start by loosening back here. This is the the exhaust hanger. That's a twelve millimeter on both sides, or as they would say in most YouTube videos that anybody who's got this bike is watching, twelve mm. Use a wrench on one side, socket on the other, break it, loosen it, leave it like that. After you loosen the back hanger, you'll need to loosen this one, and there's one on the other side. The one on the other side, you get to best with a long extension. That's a 3 8 and that's also a 12 millimeter. This side, I got to with these. These are decent wrenches, by the way. This is a um, gear wrench. Uh, they're, they're pretty decent quality, and the articulating head on the back is sweetness for getting into tight spots. And they fit here. So loosen both of these. Don't take everything off. Just loosen, loosen, loosen to give you enough room to play with. And I'll be back in a moment. With these two loosened and the back one loosened, you easily get the play you need. And that's the spot you're looking for. Royal Enfield does not put a bolt in there anymore. So I'm guessing I'm going to find a little bit of rust. It's a relatively new bike. So my plan is to take the bolt the GV provided and oil the hell out of it and run it in to kind of chase the threads. Worst comes to worst, I'll get a tap and redo it, but I'm hoping that they're clean enough inside. Okay, next step, now that you've gotten that nut off and pushed it back a bit so that this will go in, and we've re-threaded that, and really by re-threading, I just mean take the bolt they provided and oil it up and run it through the threads two or three times. It feels like you're cutting threads in aluminum, but I'm assuming it's a tough enough steel frame, so I guess they just needed to be cleaned out. Here's my tip of the day. Take this pin that's threaded at both sides and put one side on now. Otherwise, it's a pain in the ass to grab it. A little washer goes there. There's only two washers, so take the hand. And then slide that in, and as you can see, it goes in, 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 and then you're just going to kind of pivot it around. And I got it to go last time. Lift it up and pivot it in. And then what I'd recommend doing is giving that bolt a little bit of tap, tap, tap. Oh, wait, no, it's got to come out. It has to come out in order to get the other side on. So don't attempt to secure that yet, but you can attempt to secure the bottom one here. Okay, got the bolt out. Um, well, it, yeah, you can see that on there. Well, the nut came off relatively easily, um, it's clear they, they made no effort. I don't know, maybe in India, they need to teach a course on how to 
put a nut on a bolt. It just seems to like crossing threads. So I'm just going to clean that up with a, a little brass brush and then put this side on. Uh, interestingly, this one went in by hand. No need to chase threads, do anything with it. Okay, just to review some sizes, because these are mostly mounted at this point. In there, that pin that goes across at the front, it's kind of like almost an engine mount, uh, 13 millimeter on one side and 17 millimeter on the other. Prop a 17 millimeter wrench on the right side and use a 13 to weasel in there. I loosened this up. I'm not sure if it made much difference. These are all 12s. All the other bolts that you're either taking out or putting in that came with the kit, they're all 12s. So the tip off for the pin, just to make it slightly more manageable, attach it to the right side uh, crash bar and then, or engine bar, and then push the whole unit on and mount it. That way you don't got to worry about the bar falling out and attempting to thread it in, which is bull crap. And then on here it just goes, uh, same as like Harbor Freight stuff, keep everything loose until it's, uh, until you've got all the bolts mostly in, then tighten everything up. Uh, additional advice, it's a good motorcycle, but let's be realistic. It's not made of titanium. If you push on any of these bolts, uh, specifically these, you will just rip the threads right out of it. So be gentle when I'm tightening them, but don't go crazy. Uh, things to remember, if you loosen this, make sure you put it back. The exhaust, the two 12 meter, 12 millimeter that hold the exhaust. Well, you can't see it on the other side of the cylinder. And then the bracket in the back, whatever. That's what they look like mounted. I didn't want anything that stuck off too much, but I did want something that would vaguely protect things like the shift lever, which has gotten bent on the bike falling. Didn't put the bike down. The bike tipped over on my own driveway. Uh, that was the lesson for leaving it in gear when you uh, when you park it. Anyway, those are, that's what they look like. The oil cooler is 10 millimeter nuts, if I didn't mention that one. Bolts. It seems extremely sturdy. If nothing else, it's another tie-down point for the bike. Oh, one other thing. These. If, first of all, they're not Delran. They're, I'm pretty sure they're plastic. But if you wanted them not to say GV, so the back is just black, you're going to need to put them on before you mount the bars because the screws only go in one way. I don't particularly care too much. Um, I don't like branding all over the bike. Worst comes to worst, I'll just sharpie it out and call it done. And the seat is a seat concept seat, which I already put on, but I just got it inside, keeping it warm. And that's it. Last thing I'm waiting for is uh, handlebar risers.